Young's fringes are produced on the screen from the monochromatic source by the arrangement shown in figure 2. Explain how this arrangement produces interference fringes on the screen. In your answer, explain why slit S should be narrow and why slits S1 and S2 act as coherent sources. The quality of your written answer will be assessed in this question. Okay, so let me highlight some of the key points. So we're told that it is, first of all, Young's fringes. So it's Young's double slit experiment that we're considering here. We have a monochromatic source, so a single wavelength. We're trying to explain how this arrangement produces interference fringes on the screen. And then we also want to talk about why slit S should be narrow and why slits S1 and S2 act as coherent sources. Okay, so let's start with the monochromatic source. So monochromatic source means that it's a single frequency or a single wavelength that's being emitted from this source. And to have S1 and S2 acting as coherent sources, well, coherent sources means constant phase difference. One of the prerequisites to have a constant phase difference is that your light source or your wave source must be of a fixed frequency. So that's one of the conditions met as to why S1 and S2 should be coherent sources. Now let's move to the right. Let's get to this first slit over here, the single slit. So then we're asked to explain why slit S should be narrow. That's for two reasons. So the first reason is that the slit should be narrow so that you have good diffraction so that the light can actually illuminate slits S1 and S2. But why do we even need a slit in the first place to illuminate the two slits S1 and S2? Why can't we just get rid of this whole thing and then our monochromatic source, which emits light, let's say, in all directions, that could illuminate S1 and S2. And that brings us on to our second condition as to why this first slit should be narrow. Okay, so to explain this, let's consider a scenario where we have, here's our slits S1 and S2. It's S1, S2. And let's say we have a broad light source, like, let's say, a light bulb, an LED light bulb, it emits a particular frequency or a particular wavelength of light, but it's not a small point. It's not a point source. Here's our light bulb. So let's consider two points on this light bulb. So let's consider this point here. I'm putting it in purple. That's not because of the color of the light. I'm just trying to distinguish between different rays. So at this particular point on the light bulb, light will travel to S1, light will travel to S2. And there will be a certain path difference. So this length is a certain length. This length is a certain length. The difference in the two of them is the path difference. And let's just say that in this scenario, the path difference is half lambda. So let's say that this length here is a little bit longer by half of a wavelength. Now let's consider a different spot. Let's say this spot over here. So there's a certain length from here to S1, a certain length from here to S2. There's a certain path difference between those two lengths. And let's just say, in this example, the path difference is one lambda. So what that means is, the two purple lines that I've drawn, their path difference is half of an oscillation. That means that one wave is half of a wavelength ahead of the other. So the phase difference in that scenario would be half of 360 or half of two pi, so it'll be 180 degrees or pi radians. And for the two rays that I've drawn in blue, the path difference in that scenario is one wavelength. So you have one wave being one full wavelength ahead of the other. Now in that scenario, the troughs will still meet, the crests will still meet. The phase difference you could say would just be zero pi, zero lots of pi or zero lots of 360. Now what we see from this scenario is that there isn't a constant phase difference. I just considered two points on that light bulb, purple point and blue point. For the two rays coming from the purple point, the phase difference is 180, let's say, and the two rays coming from the blue point, the phase difference would be zero degrees or zero radians. And there's multiple other points as well. There's many points on this light bulb that we can consider that will all have different phase differences, different path differences. And therefore, overall, there wouldn't be a constant phase difference. If there's not a constant phase difference, your source wouldn't be coherent. To be coherent, there's two conditions again. One is that the frequency has to be constant. But the main one, which actually gets you the marks, is to say that there is a constant phase difference. Due to the fact that light can emerge from multiple different points on our light bulb, we can have multiple different phase differences, and there wouldn't be a constant phase difference. 
Now let's consider a scenario where we have light just coming from a single point. So an infinitely small point. This is it here. Here's our two slits, S1 and S2. So there is only one way in which light can travel from this slit to S1 and from this slit to S2. So there is only one path difference. The path difference doesn't have to be zero. These two lengths don't have to be identical. They can be different, so there can be a non-zero path difference. But the key thing is that the path difference is constant. So the path difference could be, let's just say, three quarters of a wavelength. Let's just say that this bottom length is longer by three quarters of a wavelength, for instance. That's fine. That's OK, because it's constant. It's not changing. Whereas along a larger light source, depending on what point you are along that light source, you will have a changing path difference and therefore changing phase difference. So that's why you need this slit to be narrow. This slit needs to be narrow because it effectively means that light is pretty much just traveling in one way from this slit to S1 and from this slit S2 to S2. There is therefore a constant path difference and therefore a constant phase difference. And if there is a constant phase difference at S1 and S2, then the two sources act as coherent sources. And that answers the second part of this question. So in your answer, explain why S should be narrow and why S1 and S2 act as coherent sources. Now on to this bit here. So explain how this arrangement produces interference fringes on the screen. This part's a bit easier. So when light passes through S1 and S2, the light diffracts. That means the light spreads out. So when light passes through S1, it spreads out and then reaches multiple points along the screen. And that's the same thing for S2. When light passes through S2, it diffracts and reaches multiple points on the screen. So the light from the two slits superposes or interferes on the screen. And then you have constructive and destructive interference occurring. So when the path difference is n lambda, this is the condition for maximum constructive interference. When you have whole numbers of wavelengths of path difference, your two wave sources will be in phase and you have max constructive interference. And the opposite is when the path difference is n plus a half lambda. In this scenario, the path difference would be, for instance, half lambda, one and a half lambda, two and a half lambda. That's when you have max destructive interference occurring and then your two waves will be in antiphase. And as I've written down, when the path difference is n lambda, that's where you have maxima, so bright fringes on your screen. And when the path difference is n plus a half lambda, that's where you have minima, so max destructive interference occurs at those points, and you don't see much light. So just to clarify this point, I don't think I mentioned this in the explanation, the narrower your slit, the more diffraction you will have. And this peaks when you have your slit being approximately the same width as your wavelength. That's when you have maximum diffraction occurring. So if that initial slit, if slit S, is approximately the same size as the wavelength of our monochromatic source, you'll have good diffraction occurring, and the light will then illuminate both slits S1 and S2.